Well, how awesome is that? It's always such a great experience to be able to worship God with our community, no matter where you are. And I hope you guys connected with God through that worship time as well. You know, if you have any prayer requests, feel free to chuck them in the comment section. We'd love to be able to engage with that and walk through uh, with you uh, in your prayer and, and your requests or anything like that too. So, guys, we have an awesome, awesome uh, session for you today. Uh, we, as a Generations team, have the absolute honour and privilege to be able to share our heart with you. Uh, we don't actually often get to do this uh, like together do we like and it's always a lot of fun I'd, I'd say it's a lot of fun I, I treat these guys like my uh, my sisters um, so effectively what I'm saying is I'm pretty annoying to them um, <laughs> but they love it <laughs> from my perspective <laughs> um, so we've got we've got an awesome session for you guys and you know we, we had the like I said the privilege to be able to share God's heart with you and as we got together as a team uh, as a generations team and started discerning what the Lord wanted to say to our community uh, we really, really felt that there was one thing in particular that the Lord wanted to get across. And it's something that we represent as a Generations team in our uh, different ministries. Um, and although we do different ministries, we're not solo ministries. We have one sort of undergirding foundation that keeps us passionate, that keeps us going for the Lord, that keeps us um, really engaged in building His kingdom. And that, that revelation or the, the thought today that we want to share with you and really want to unpack with you is that Church is not uh, just an organization. Church is not just an event. Uh, church is not something that we just come to and tick it off uh, throughout our week. Church is a family that we've been invited into. And you know, you might have heard that term before, you know, church is a family, and it almost might have been, might be something that's become a little bit cliche to you. But really, I think that what the Lord is really sort of impressing upon us as a, as a team and as a church inviting us into is to get a fresh revelation, a fresh uh, revealing of what that term actually means, a church is a family. You know, there are so many people in our culture today who are lacking true family connections. You know, we've just had a lockdown in Melbourne, uh, Victoria. Uh, if you're not from Melbourne, Victoria, uh, we've just gone through a lockdown because of the of COVID-19 and you would know as well that you everyone has experienced sort of lockdowns. It's, it's not really an event that people are missing, I think. Um, I think what people are missing is family connection. And so we want to just be able to, just to be able to explore that topic with you guys. We want to be able to throw it to you and, and get you guys to engage with it as well. You know, bring it to the Lord and pray. But I just want to read to you from 1 John uh, 3, and then we can sort of go from there. Is that cool? Mm -hmm. Awesome. So 1 John 3 says, See what great love the Father lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. You know, um, a lot of people actually uh, confuse me and Tiani <laughs> as brothers and sisters. And um, we live in a, in, in a <laughs> locale where, where we, we are the minority, which is awesome. And um, so a lot of people think that <laughs> we are brothers and sisters and uh, we're, we're not. Um, so we just have the same uh, uh, skin, skin tone. Um, but, but but we are <laughs> we are brothers and and sisters in in, in Christ I'd say and so um, look I, I think I think for me uh, for me to understand that that I've been invited into a family and not an event and not a club is something that's just so so important to to under for me to understand and I think um, it's not a random thought that we're trying to pick up on um, so I was I was reading a book once and. Uh, this uh, author said that, you know, the Apostle Peter had this revelation of like the kingdom, getting people into the kingdom. You know, he preached in Acts and about 3,000 souls were saved and they got ushered into the kingdom. And he said that the Apostle Paul had this massive revelation about the gospel of grace and what it means to get into the gospel. And he also said that the Apostle John, who was the Apostle of Love, that uh, wrote the gospel of John and 1 John 2 and 3, he had... A specific revelation around the kingdom of God as being a family and so when we read these and when you read this book you got so much language around fathers brothers sisters and loving each other and laying our lives down for each other and I just I'm really encouraged to go on a journey to figure out what he has because I want that for ourselves but I think if we can and we'll explore um, this idea a little bit more but if, I think if we can really delve down into this it would help so much like it help the loneliness, it will help uh, people feeling isolated, it will help people not being known, it will help people gain an identity and to know that they're loved unconditionally, like we are in a family situation, ideally. Yeah. 
What are your thoughts, Kat? Yeah, I love the idea of family. And um, one of the thing, things I love about God's family is that there aren't any prerequisites. You don't have to um, have come from a certain background to um, fit into the family of God. But um, a very clear message throughout the New Testament is that Jesus came for everyone so that we could all come into this family of God. And and speaking of Paul, like I love the way he talks in Ephesians, um, Ephesians 2, about um, the household of God. And it's not just um, the Jews and the Israelites, like that journey that God took the Israelites on wasn't just for the Israelites, but it was just as much for the Gentiles as well. And he talks about how Jesus came to break that barrier, that wall, so that um, it was about everybody. Everybody is invited. And looking at how we're doing church these days, like it's not just in person, but we're online. And I, I love how accessible online is for people. And so wherever you're connecting from today, like you are just as much part of this family that we are talking about as the people who come to the building or, or wherever, like God's family is is not just one separate group of people um, who live the exact same way somewhere in the world. It's it's an all-inclusive, Jesus came for everyone. Um, and that continues to blow my mind every day. Like, it is crazy. That's how this family works. Um, and it's beautiful as well. Now, Liv, you had some pretty cool thoughts around uh, family as well. Now, um, my kids absolutely love Liv because <laughs> they love both of you guys. Um, and so I, I, I find it's like such a joy um, having two young kids, uh, one's two years old, four years old, to run up to you guys and be like, oh, you know, it's Liv and Kate from, from TV, from, you know, and they treat you like family and see you like family. What are your thoughts around, um, yeah, this being a family? Yeah, um, like Kate touched on it, I think the thing that unites us all is Jesus and what he's done for us. And um, I love that it is the big family, that it's not just our individual families. Like I think each of us represent um, our families that all look very different. And, you know, we're not all just have, have families that are the two parents, two points, something kids and... Um, but when we come together, we're part of God's family and there's something really beautiful and special in that. And I think it can bring up that idea of family or even the word family can bring up a lot of emotions and experiences for probably all of us and everyone listening as well. I think there can be some really negative um, experience that people have gone through with family, but I think God has um, a plan and a dream and how family should be. And I love that, um, like the Bible talks about, that we would be known as his disciples because of our love for one another. And that's what I love seeing in church, um, church family, that it is um, no matter, yeah, no matter who you are, you have a place to belong in the family. And I love seeing that in what I get to do, like, um, one of the things I see a lot is new mums, like having new babies, like that can be really, yeah, quite an isolating time when you've got a new baby to look after and, or even young kids, you, they require a lot of attention. Um, but I love seeing our team of um, pastoral, zero to two pastoral care ladies come alongside. They've all got kids that have grown up into adults, but they come alongside new mums as part of the family, um, supporting them and loving them. And that's just one example that I love seeing, you know, and that happens informally as well within church. Um, you know, you might call them family friends or you might, they might be the people you have lunch with on a Sunday, but um, it really is that sense of family, you know, we're there when you need it. Um, we're there to love you no matter what, yeah. And I think it was you, Liv, when we were having an initial chat about this even yesterday, um, I think it was you that said that sometimes if we do come from, like you mentioned, people come from different backgrounds. Some, some come from really dysfunctional family backgrounds. And then when we can come into the church, the kingdom of God, we almost need to be trained again. Like the father trains us again how to be loved from a father and, and to actually belong to a family. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, like I think there's a reason why God is our father. You know, I think that's... Um, who he is to us <laughs> and to um, 
yeah, like whatever your experience might be, like even as we're talking about it, you might be noticing those things popping up. Um, but I think God wants to, yeah, retrain us and I guess re help us relearn what family's meant to be, like his picture of family and, yeah, his picture of what love actually is, not the um, counterfeit version or... Um, you know, we're all human, so we're going to make mistakes. We People will let us down, but God never does. And so he is the one that our love comes from. Um, and in his family, we can rely on that source of love um, for each other. Awesome. So good. What about you, Tiani? What do you reckon? <laughs> well, family, as we've just been talking about, is so important. And I just love the multifaceted layers of church family and family as a church that we there's a beautiful space where intergenerational people are connecting with different people there's older people connecting with younger people and younger people connecting to older people and that's just that beautiful sense of family just being all connected and there is this shift of just being this um, God of nuclear family to God of the family as as a big generational um, mixture of all the different people in one family together and I think that's the power of church and the power of generational ministry um, and I just the beautiful uh, verse in Psalm 145 where it says that um, that people would speak of um, God's goodness and they would pass it on to generation to generation and I just love that everybody if we look at church in that way if we look at church in in that call that everybody has a part to play that everybody has a part to to give to give and pass on so maybe you're watching and you're maybe in the older generation and you're just feeling like um you just maybe you're feeling like i don't have anything what do i have to, to, to pass on, we need your stories. We need your um, your wisdom and your and the things that God has taught you and the 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 beautiful sense of spiritual parenting mm. and the wisdom that you have. We need that as younger generation. And I feel like there's this call in this space today. And so um, even right now, if maybe you're listening and you go, I don't know what I could pass on. Maybe we can be praying for you in that space. Um, um, today where you can just have the opportunities to to pass on those things and to yeah to have that it's really cool so good I, I think what you're saying is just so important because i think especially i think for youth and young adult ministries is we get this idea that we can do life by ourselves so almost like we do, all we need is our peer group friends and you know we're, it's almost um for lack of a better term it's almost like orphan kids trying to raise orphan kids kind of thing and so there is a massive call for younger people who just want spiritual parents you know paul paul himself says yeah. you've got so many teachers you've got so many guys but you don't have many fathers and paul himself did not have any children so he was a spiritual father and maybe you don't have any children um you know there are, there are people in our church that don't don't have any children and you might be asking yourself a question like what can i do or what can i offer well spiritual fathering and mothering is what you can offer um, because because Paul did that to Timothy and because Paul did that to Silas and Barnabas, because Paul uh, stepped into that that office of being a spiritual father, Christianity and the kingdom expanded, the family actually expanded. And so if you think that you you don't have a place, like, like what T was saying, I, I'd, I'd say, you know, I'd argue that you actually do. And, yeah. and I'm telling you right now, because I think, um, and you could probably speak to this a little bit as well, Tiani, the younger generation seems as though they feel like that we've got it all figured out because we've got the internet. <laughs> like we've got any question in Google and they'll find the, yeah, that's right. the answer. <laughs> yeah. I can tell you right now that's a, that's a facade. Um, they're scared. They don't know how to engage with life. They don't know how to do relationships. They don't know practical things like how to save money or even think about the future or plan. And this is all things that a spiritual father and mother can impart into their spiritual children mm -hmm. as well. So there's, there's such an important part to that. So guys, if you, if, did you want to say any more on that? No, it's all yep. good. So guys, if, you, if that is something that resonates with you, we really just wanted to come across today and, um, and you know, not really uh, give an idea, but actually go back to the Word of God and ask ourselves, what is God's heart for the church? 
what is the thing that he wants to reveal reveal to us and we truly believe that we're coming into a season where we need to treat each other more like family not like club members mm. you know what i mean so we can argue we can disagree you know but at the end of the day we'll lay our lives down for each other and that and that you can stand on my shoulders and go for that's the attitude of a family so I wonder if uh, you'd want to join us now in in a bit of communion. So, like I said, I gave you three seconds just before to get your elements. I'm going to give you two more seconds. Uh, if you haven't got it already, just uh, to pick up your elements and join us. You know, Jesus, our, our brother, um, laid his life down for us. And he, his body was broken uh, for us so that we might we might have health in our bodies. You know, we might feed on his body. And so, I wonder if you have an element in your... Uh, hand and to consider that this isn't a, a master that's um, aloof. This is our actual brother, the firstborn, the scripture says, that laid his life down for us. And let this be an example for us to lay our lives down for each other. So if you want to join in and eat the bread, that'd be awesome. And you know, this... Um, this communion represents the new covenant that we're a part of. You know, God has made an agreement for us that he will never leave nor forsake us, that he will bless us just because he is good and a loving father and it was all made possible by his son, Jesus Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit. This covenant that we have is what the Old Testament guys envied. We've got it for free. You know, we get to enter into it by faith and we drink to remind ourselves of the fact that this covenant is a covenant of grace. Your father, God the Father, relates to you on the basis of grace. Mm. He loves you. Yeah. It's, it's full of mercy. It's not a father. I don't know what your, uh, what your situation is. Maybe you had a bad family experience of parents not being so nice. That is not God. He is training you to see him through the lens of grace. And this is the new covenant that we have. So I wonder if you um, want to do that with us as well. So Father, we just thank you so much that we get to be a part of your family. We thank you so much that we get to treat each other like brothers and sisters, not club members or um, numbers in, in a system, but, uh, but people who we are to lay our lives down for, Lord God. And I just pray that you would ever increasingly give us a revelation that we have entered into a family mm -hmm. for a Father who loves us so deeply it's so hard to comprehend. And as we go forward, Father God, I just pray that as we love each other like family, the people who don't, are not in this family at the moment, don't belong to this family, would want to be in this family because of the love that we have for each other. In your precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Cool, cool. Well, thanks for joining us today, guys. Uh, have an awesome rest of the day. It was such an honour as a Generations team to be able to share with you. Um, I guess I'm a little bummed that I didn't wear mustard today, but like I said... Um, shirt brings out my eyes. Yeah. You must have wear mustard next time. Uh, yeah, we'll see how we go. All right, have a good one, guys. Catch you later.